Hi, welcome to Controller's Corner. I'm your host, Pat Curry, joined as always by Buffalo Controller Mark Schroeder. Our top story today, Controller Schroeder's audit of the city's animal shelter has led to sweeping changes that have strengthened internal controls at the pound. Now, Mark, your audit had 19 findings yeah. and 11 recommendations. Now, the Department of Public Work Works, which oversees the animal shelter, has agreed with all 19 findings and has implemented or is in the process of impl implementing all 11 recommendations. This is a very um, successful audit as far as putting the internal controls in place that protects the city of Buffalo's assets. No, no question about it. The animal shelter uh, provides a very important service to citizens in Buffalo. And so therefore, the citizens of Buffalo need to feel confident uh, that when they go there, that everything is happening um, within best practices. And so the, the audit team, under the leadership of Kevin Kaufman, our city auditor, uh, did an absolutely outstanding job, identified many things that need to be changed at the animal shelter. Uh, all the people who work at the animal shelter, they're very, very nice people, uh, but leadership needs to come in and to explain how best practices are gonna win the day. Uh, and so the audit team did a very, very good job. And to the commissioner's credit, Stepniak, uh, uh, Steve Stepniak, um, he agreed with all of the findings and recommendations uh, that audit put in place and decided that they were gonna do something about it. Now, as you know, Patrick, um, the auditors and the city auditor will be watching this uh, as it develops because uh, some of the things that they put in place, you just can't wiggle your nose like the old bewitched TV show from the 60s. Uh, it takes time, it takes effort. Uh, and so we are going to provide uh, the leadership, of course, that, that we always do within the controller's office, uh, but with the compliance, with the agreement uh, of the commissioner uh, of public works, uh, it's going to be a lot simpler to implement and to put into place. Now, one of the issues that your audit found was that there was a donation box for cash or gift card donations, and, and oftentimes that money would intermingle with the money in the cash register or wasn't accounted for the way uh, it should have been. Yeah. And, and the administration, the, the commissioner has come back and said that, that they're going to defer donations to the Friends of the Animal Shelter. Now, that's a 501c not-for-profit organization, yeah. and that's it's much more acceptable as for, you, for you as far as no, uh, a way to handle these donations no, for animals. No, no question about it, because, you know, when this audit was underway and av as we began to... Um, you know, get to get to the conclusion of the audit. Um, certainly, no controller wants to be in a situation where you have to shut it down. You want to be able to put in place things that are tangible, things that are attainable, things that make sense, things that everybody's agreeable on. And so that's what we were able uh, to do. And uh, uh, really, a lot of credit, Patrick, goes to Kevin Kaufman. He is a gifted CPA and city auditor. He gets it. He understands uh, you know, working within a municipality. Uh, and so um, one of the concerns certainly that I had also was the cash that would be there at the animal shelter or anywhere. And, and so um, in talking with the city auditor, uh, certain provisions have been put in place. For instance, the, uh, the treasurer's department, um, they are playing a vital role uh, and I believe it's now every five days or so um, the, the animal shelter is bringing to the city treasurer in City Hall, um, you know, information and perhaps um, cash, cash, deposits. cash deposits and those, those types of things where in, before it really wasn't happening that way. Uh, and so, um, looks like it's happening according to the response twice a week now when it wasn't happening nearly that much right. before your audit came in. Yeah. And there was just too much cash sitting around in that drawer. Yeah. And what, what we want to do is we want to set people up for success. Um, you know, people who work for the city uh, basically are very, very good people who are providing a service to citizens. And, and there's, there's, there's value in leadership. 
uh, and that that's one of the reasons why we conduct these audits. And uh, you know, earlier today, uh, I met with the Commissioner of Finance and the Director of Treasury. Uh, you know, just to kind of discuss this a little bit and, and to try to implement a team approach to teach and train people. Listen, I have no problem in coming in hard and pointing the finger and telling people that you're doing it wrong and if you don't do it right, we're going to shut you down. I, I know how to do that. I've done it before. But that isn't really what I want to do. And I, what I want to be able to do is teach and train people how to do things, best practices, uh, that's going to benefit the citizens of Buffalo. And this is an example of that taking place right now. And our, our, uh, our viewers will have to stay tuned. Uh, and, uh, and hopefully this will, uh, this will continue. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the overall picture with citywide. But uh, on this animal shelter audit, one of the things that your audit found was that over a third of the times a cash drawer was opened were for no sales. Now, anytime that occurs, there could be uh, some opportunity for cash to become missing out of there. So one of the things that has been um, implemented at the shelter is that uh, all no sale transactions have to be signed off by a supervisor so that there's uh, no misappropriation of funds from the cash register. Yeah, the, these, are, these are certain things um, that the audit team and then under the leadership of Kevin Kaufman uh, came up with, which are essential. They're, they're, they're very, very important. Uh, and, and as you know, Patrick, and I think the viewers know too, uh, this isn't a one-time hit. You know, we, we just don't do this one time. Um, we, we continue to look at our audits on a yearly basis, what we call the anniversary audits. Uh, and so we, we are very grateful for the audit team uh, for really doing good work in, in trying to figure out exactly what happens at the animal shelter uh, and then make recommendations that actually makes sense and that can be implemented. Uh, and then it's not like we're going to go away and never look at this again. Um, in fact, um, when we talked to the city treasurer today and the commissioner of finance, uh, we, not only for the animal shelter, uh, but for other places within city hall that collect cash especially, and some of the extraneous places outside of city hall, um, we are asking the administration to conduct, you know, some sort of a meeting or a seminar or answer questions and answer period. Uh, and if they want somebody from the controller's office to be there to be, that be helpful, um, that's what we'll do. But that's that's what we need. We need to communicate. Uh, I think people want to do the right thing, uh, but they they need to have the plan. And uh, and that and that's that's what we've done essentially uh, with this uh, very very good, outstanding audit uh, from uh, Kevin Kaufman and his team. Now, as you mentioned, citywide, there's probably over a dozen or more uh, city departments that may accept cash. And, and most of the accountants are in your department. So these yeah. other departments don't have the training to know um, about segregation of duties and, and other accounting uh, procedures. So that's why you and uh, the Department of Treasury are teaming up to send out a list of policies and procedure for any department that's taking cash that they should follow these guidelines to strengthen the internal controls yeah. and to avoid any malfeasance or any uh, opportunity for, for an employee yeah. to... Uh, no misuse those funds. Yeah, no, no question about it. And you know the, the old term that's used a lot in the private sector, knowledge is power. It, it is, Patrick, and this is the reason why um, over the last four years we have brought in such qualified staff. Um, we've gone from one CPA to nine CPAs. We have very, very qualified people. Uh, and it's essential and it's important and it really shows. And one of the things that we did early on is we implemented a questionnaire process that we sent the questionnaires to all of the different departments. And we asked the question, uh, if you're involved in cash in any way, shape or form, uh, please let us know. And so when we had the meeting today with the administration, the question was asked by the administration, you know, do you know where all the cash is? Yeah, we know. The controller's office knows. The reason why we know is that we put this in place four years ago in asking the question, where is cash coming into City Hall or around City Hall? 
We know what the answers are. And so when you have the information, it's what you do with it. And that is why this audit was so good. But now the administration is cooperating with us. And at the end of the day, the product that we're going to have for accepting cash only with the treasurer directly involved is going to be very good for the citizens of Buffalo, protects them and their money. Now, part of that is because audits like the animal shelter uh, uh, spurred this initiative to put these procedures out there for all city employees that deal with cash because what the city auditor said was that he was finding that the same problems were occurring in department by department and rather than going in and auditing them and telling them what they're doing wrong yeah. uh, he, you thought it would be better to t tell them what they should do right uh, for instance keep receipts use pre-numbered documents yeah. uh, utilize a cash a locked cash drawer and segregate duties so the same person taking the money yeah. isn't the same person entering into the munis the accounting system yeah. so so this is a way to um, instead of waiting for us to come around and audit them yeah. and, and then tell them what they're doing wrong, tell them what they should be doing right, and then we could check on it later yeah. and, and see yeah. if they're complying well, with the Well, you know, as you know, my, so two of my favorite authors uh, was, uh, was Stephen Covey, Dr. Stephen Covey, and, and uh, Tom Peters. Tom Peters wrote the book In Search of Excellence, and in that book it says, catch somebody doing something right. And so that's what we're doing. And that is the reason why this audit was so comprehensive. This is the reason why the audit gives uh, recommendations. This is the reason why we're following up with others to teach and train them to do it the right way. And so at the end of the day, we're doing the right thing. We're getting the proper cooperation. And so I'm looking forward uh, to giving the citizens and the viewers uh, who, who watch the Controller's Corner uh, how this is progressing. And, and part of it is to prevent some of these crimes that have occurred against the city. We had uh, parking meter people stealing coins, uh, Office of Licenses pocketing um, yep. money for licenses. Uh, there was, uh, you know, other uh, embezzlement from the city in the Parks Department where he's uh, renting shelters out and keeping yeah. the money. Yeah. This is designed to uh, make sure that nobody has that much power or that ability or that opportunity yeah. to take the money without a, as a, someone else red flagging that. And, yeah. and this system seems to be working in, in particular in that licenses uh, example I provided before. Yeah. No, no, no question, no question about it. And, uh, and this, this is something that when Ann Forty Sherino, my first deputy and I first got started four years ago, you know, we talked about these types of things and, and how we would like to be instrumental in being helpful to people who are trying to do the right thing. Patrick, there are bad apples everywhere. And if somebody's trying to beat the system or trying to steal, um, you can have the best systems in the world and they probably are going to accomplish what they're trying to do. But, but I'm, not, I'm not concerned about them. I'm concerned about the good people who work in the city of Buffalo who really want to come into work every day and provide a service to our citizens. And we have a responsibility to train them properly. This is what this is all about. And most employees want to do the right thing. And they just need the knowledge and the, and the policies and procedures written down so they can use them as a guide, yeah. especially with turnover, retirements, new employees coming in. It helps to have a document that they can look to yeah. and, and see exactly what they should there's be doing. There's no question about it. And in, th in, this, in this, this day of technology, there's really no reasons why uh, to why when somebody comes in. That's, that's like when somebody comes into the controller's office, um, you know, thanks to you and, and this group here at the Apollo, you've put together uh, a beginning type of introduction, you know, to the controller's office, to the different divisions and audit, what to expect, who the different leaders are, what the processes are, what the procedures are. And the, these are important things. I can assure you, and, and I know because I came from the private sector, that happens in the private sector. It ought to happen here in Buffalo, and it does, uh, and it will continue as long as I'm the controller. All right, Mark, uh, we got to take a brief break. All right. When we get Pat. back, I want to talk about another audit that's taking longer than expected. Stay tuned for more Controller's Corner after this. Are you unemployed, underemployed, or do you need to improve your job skills? Then the Buffalo Employment and Training Center is here for you. The Buffalo Employment and Training Center is your one-stop employment shop. Whether you need help with your search, access to information, seminars or training, our expert and caring staff is here for you. And the best part is, all of our services are free. 
The Buffalo Employment and Training Center is conveniently located at 77 Goodell Street in downtown Buffalo with plenty of free parking. For more information, call 856-JOBS or visit us on the web at www.workforcebuffalo.org. Hi, welcome back to Comptroller's Corner. Comptroller Shorter's audit of the city's street lighting and electricity charges identified 17 claims against the city's utility provider, National Grid. The first claim alone represents w over $1 million that's owed to the city by National Grid. Now, Mark, you recently met with National Grid, and you were looking forward to getting payment on that $1 million claim. It was for luminaires that w the city was charged for that didn't even exist. Claim number one. Right. Claim number one of 17. <laughs> um, so you sat down with National Grid and it was, it was your understanding that, you know, the other 16 claims we put aside and, and that you would deal uh, exclusively with uh, claim number one, which yeah. is this luminaire's charge. Unfortunately, uh, National Grid wanted to deduct some other uh, past due invoices that they believe the city's owed. Uh, th those invoices are not handled by your department. Yeah. Uh, the city is disputing that they even owe those. Yeah. And uh, it, giant it, curveball, yes, right, Patrick? Yes, it was a giant curveball. <laughs> and uh, it, it, so, in essence, this uh, settlement or this agreement, this payment that National Grid owed the city uh, did not occur because they were improperly trying to deduct these other invoices. And you gave National Grid the message that that's not how we're going to do this and, yeah. and we're going to continue our audit and, and the city wants the money that the taxpayers are owed from the city's utility provider, National Grid. Yeah. So all I can tell you is that, thank God, usually my instincts are pretty good. Uh, back in 2005, I was right about Speaker Sheldon Silver. Uh, as he goes through his trial this week in Manhattan because basically he was a bad guy. And so National Grid, Patrick, we've been, we've been, we've been this is the longest duration audit um, probably in the city's history. And it's because um, National Grid is very disingenuous. They, they have disappointed me greatly, right from the beginning. So when they, when they threw the great big curveball last week, I wasn't surprised uh, by that at all. It's part of their behavior uh, that I've uh, noticed uh, over the last year and a half. So, so now, you know, I, we always try to be very professional uh, in the controller's office. Uh, I have as assembled the most incredible staff ever in the history of the controller's office. I can tell you that. Um, but I'm an old street fighter, and now the gloves are off with National Grid. Uh, and so over the next uh, two to three weeks, uh, we will put together what our response is to that giant curveball. Uh, and at the end of the day, the taxpayers of Buffalo will get paid every single penny and more from National Grid. And plus, this will never happen again. This will never happen again. National Grid or any utility company or any vendor uh, for the city of Buffalo will never be able to be in a position like this to shortchange the citizens of Buffalo. I'll make sure that safeguards are put in place so that this doesn't happen down the road. Now, not only was National Grid trying to deduct this uh, past due invoices, but they also tried to deny the city of the interest, over $200,000 that they would be owed as a result of their overbilling. Yeah. So the, unfortunate that, that this uh, utility is trying to deny taxpayers their money for their own mistake, National Grid's mistake, and, and they won't even uh, step up to the plate and do the right thing and give the city taxpayers what they deserve. Yeah, and so I, so I, wanna, I wanna make sure that the, the taxpayers and the citizens understand uh, the, the kind of qu quality of people that I have in my office, including you, Patrick. Some people maybe just think that you're a news reporter. You're not, you're my executive assistant uh, in the controller's office. And you and Kevin Kaufman, the city auditor, were very, very smart to bring in the Corporation Council last week when they came in to throw the curveball. Uh, the citizens might know that the Corporation Council uh, is the lawyer for the city of Buffalo and represents the mayor, represents the controller, represents 
lawmakers within the Common Council. And by you and Kevin, uh, inviting the Corporation Council there, I believe, was instrumental. Uh, it's because the, the City Law Department and now the Mayor are very aware of what is going on and what National Grid is trying to do. And it's disingenuous, it's wrong, they should be ashamed of themselves. But now we have no other choice but to go forward and to figure out a way creatively and quickly to get the money that they owe us back. And as you pointed out in the beginning, um, we thought this meeting was gonna be about claim number one. What about claims two through 17? Um, we've got a lot of work to do here, and if they wanna play hardball, they came to the right place. They came to the right place. The gloves are off, National Grid. And this is a significant expense for the city. In fact, it's the largest non-personnel related expense for the city out of electricity. It's over $16 million a year. Yeah. So every penny counts. And especially when we have one claim that represents a million dollars, you can only imagine what the other 17 or so claims would represent. So you're going to make sure, and you're working with consultants that only get paid if the city gets a settlement, and yeah. you're working with them, and they're very, very knowledgeable in this industry and the tariffs that govern this industry, right. and you're going to make sure that you do everything you can, including uh, contacting state government, the Public Service Commission, uh, to let them know what's going on and to make sure taxpayers are made whole uh, by the utility provider and that we're not paying for any electricity or any streetlights that we're not yeah. have. No, no question about it. And I, and I think the citizens uh, need, need to know um, that uh, some time ago, the Buffalo Common Council unanimously passed a resolution asking the Comptroller's Office to conduct a audit on streetlights. And so, exactly what you said, we, as always, we go through a very professional process. We first try to determine whether or not we would be able to do the audit internally. And we decided that that would be too stressful. We wouldn't be able to do it because we have a lot of other audits to do, including the one we just talked about with the animal shelter and others. So we went through an RFP process, meaning that we put out information looking for a professional organization uh, who has experience in doing these types of audits. We found the perfect partner. They came in, they've been working hand in hand with us, and I feel that they felt the effects of the curveball as well last week. Uh, and so together, um, we are gonna do the best we can to counter it and to try to bring this to a conclusion as quickly as we can. And now, now the other claims, uh, two through 17, there might be some dispute between the city and National Grid or whether they're valid or not, and National Grid claims they're doing their own little yeah. audit to uh, yeah. identify that. But they don't even dispute claim number one. They admit that they owe us that money, they were overbilling us, and there's nothing to look at. So as far as you're concerned, uh, the money's very late that the taxpayers are due. Oh yeah, and, and, and more important than that, it's disingenuous, it's something that it was, uh, the meeting was set up for one sp specific thing, and then all of a sudden, they just turned the meeting around. And boy, am I glad they did it in front of the Corporation Council. Uh, you know, because trying to explain what they did to others, and we are gonna do that. I mean, we are gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go personally see the mayor and make sure he understands, you know, what took place. Um, and you will represent me by having a communication uh, with the council president and all of the members of the Common Council, uh, whether it's in one of their committee meetings or uh, as a whole, so that they understand what took place. And uh, they, they ought to be mad about it. And if I, if, I, if I was, you know, if I wanted to be overly dramatic right now, um, you know, I, we would have the phone numbers out there and call National Grid and say, how dare you do this to us? But we're not gonna do that. We, I'm, I'm, I feel I have a responsibility to let the citizens know what's happening. Um, but I also feel I have a responsibility to solve this, to figure this out, to fix it. And uh, I'm comfortable with both, communicating to the public. We've got a situation right here. We're taking the responsibility to figure out a way to solve it. And that's where we are right now. Mark, switching gears for a moment, your department handles the city's bank accounts. Um, 
there was some big news in the Buffalo area recently that First Niagara, a large local bank, is uh, trying to be sold to KeyBank. Now, this could affect the city's accounts with First Niagara. And right now, you're looking at all your options, and you're keeping your options completely open. Yes. And, and perhaps looking at your relationship with all banks, and looking at your relationship now, and what you think it should be, and it's something that you're going to look at before the sale is even complete. Absolutely. And we're, we have already began the process. And so, I mean, there have been rumors out there for months and months and months that, you know, what is going to happen to First Niagara? The stock Stockholders certainly weren't happy with First Niagara, and so now we're in a situa situation where KeyBank appears to be the one coming in to acquire them. Uh, and so one of the things that we will do is that we, we know, I mean, I know and we know in the controller's office, the three largest banks that we deal with in order are First Niagara, J.P. Morgan Chase, M&T Bank. And so what we will do right now is we will evaluate evaluate where we are. Uh, and one of the things that um, we're going to consider, Patrick, is we're going to consider perhaps doing a RFP. Um, so going out there and telling the banks that here's our interest, here's what we're interested in, here's what a bank has to provide us, and then and make a decision perhaps to go with one bank to provide services uh, that the city of Buffalo needs. Uh, and so that's what we're considering right now. Uh, I am concerned about the key First Niagara relationship. Uh, I am have been concerned over the years of J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, as you recall, uh, two and a half years ago, we took $45 million away from J.P. Morgan Chase because, quite frankly, I wasn't really happy with them, and I thought that perhaps they're forgetting best practices. Uh, and so we, we are never afraid to make a move, but we like to make an informed move. And this is what we're doing right now. We're evaluating, we're figuring out what to do, and then we will strike. Now, Mark, we only have a minute left, but Veterans Day is coming up. You have a very active schedule on that yeah. day addressing some veterans. Tell us about what yeah. you have planned. Well, the reason why I do, Patrick, is, is that the viewers might remember that I have quite an affinity to veterans. I was born on an American Air Force base in England. My father was a staff sergeant in the United States Air Force. My mother obviously was there with him. I was born there and lived there. Uh, for for two years, and then when I became a member of the New York State Assembly, um, I, the, the the proudest moment was when they put me on the Veterans Committee, uh, and and the first bill I ever introduced that became law was veterans related. Uh, so on, on Veterans Day, um, I will be very, very busy. I'll start off at Forest Lawn with the American Legion. Uh, and then at noon, uh, I will be at noon or one, I'll be at Troop I uh, post 635 on Franklin. Um, and that is for a, a speech that I'll be, be giving. And I'll, I'll do some history and I'll, and I'll be talking about how grateful we are as a nation for veterans uh, who have s served our country. Well, Mark, that's all the time we have for this week's Controller's Corner. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Patrick. And thanks for joining us at home. Make sure to check out the uh, Controller's Corner YouTube channel, our Facebook page, our Twitter handle, and the Controller's website at city-buffalo.com controller. On behalf of Mark Schroeder, this is Pat Curry signing off.